Welcome again. In this passage, we're going to be reading John chapter 9, verses 13 to 34. The Pharisees question the healing of the man born blind. Now, don't forget, we just came from the previous session where Jesus healed a man born blind. And he healed in a very peculiar way. He spit in mud and he made he formed mud with his spit and he wiped it on the on the man's eyes told the man to go wash in a pool and the man went and washed and was healed so we're just coming back from that now the pharisees you need to understand here uh in the hebrew parashim they are what you might call some of the holiest or at least supposed to be some of the holiest most religious people in in jesus day now not all Pharisees were bad. I know that a lot of people, you know, when you hear the word Pharisee, you got a really negative, uh, you know, connotation with that word Pharisee. And that's mainly because of what Jesus said about a lot of the Pharisees. But you need to understand that two thirds, that's, you know, two thirds of the New Testament was written by a Pharisee. Paul said in the, in the, uh, book of uh, Philippians, I am a Pharisee. He didn't say I was. He didn't say I repented from Phariseeism. He said, I am a Pharisee. He maintained his Pharisee status amongst the Pharisees to his death. Okay. Paul was a Pharisee. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. There were many Pharisees. Some people even argue that Jesus himself was a Pharisee. Okay. So that's another whole uh, video all by itself. Whether or not Jesus was, that's another whole video. But you need to understand that not all Pharisees were bad. Matthew chapter 23, Jesus actually told his disciples to observe and do all that the Pharisees tell, you know, tell you to observe and do. Just don't do what they do because they're hypocrites, but do what they say because they say the you know right things and they observe right things, okay? So you need to understand as well that Pharisees, uh, while we're on the topic, they observed all of the, you know, the Jewish customs, not so much the Sadducees. They observed only the Torah, which were, whereas the Pharisees observed the oral law and the Torah, the written law. Okay. And that's another whole subject all by itself again. Uh, but just to put a bug in your ear, Jesus did not explicitly condemn every, in, you know, every Pharisee alive, you know, and he, he didn't explicitly tell his disciples, don't listen to the Pharisees. They're, you know, they're liars. Their doctrine is wrong. No, he said the opposite. He said, listen to the Pharisees, Matthew chapter 23. So having said that, let's go back to our story here. Jesus healed a man born blind and the Pharisees, well, you know, usually they're not very happy about what Jesus did. They didn't quite understand. Verse 13, they brought him who had been born blind to the Pharisees. It was a Sabbath when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Again, therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, I washed and I see. Some, notice the word some, therefore of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such things? So there was division among them. Again, here is a little bit of a clue here going on. There were Pharisees that were believers, okay? Some of the Pharisees did not believe. Others did. Another thing to notice as well, the Pharisees, they accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath. But Jesus never did break the Sabbath. What you need to understand is the Pharisees, like a lot of people today, you know, and we see this in every area of life. I mean, even outside of the religious circle, you know, even in, in, in the area of, of, of your work, maybe, you know, your employer. But it's just the tendency of natural man to just make extra rules, make extra policies, you know, make extra regulations, make extra rules, just because for some reason, you know, it seems like uh, humans like to just make rules and and lord it over other humans um you know i got a lot to say about that when it comes to the political world today but um yeah that's the way it was back then no not much different than what we see in a lot of you know places of employment today you know even outside of the religious uh world outside of the religious arena um 
people just like to make rules, extra rules. They like, they like to take one rule that is and just make extra rules with it or just take it too far, okay? And that's what the Pharisees did here with the Sabbath. They just added extra rules to the Sabbath. They focused so much on the Sabbath, they actually, and this is another whole teaching all by itself, they actually broke other commandments just to keep their interpretation of the Sabbath, okay? For example, other commandments uh, speak about being compassionate, okay? And so they would break that rule of being compassionate uh, just for the sake of keeping Sabbath, you know? And so uh, that's what happened here. You know, Jesus here was being accused of breaking the Sabbath, According to the law of God, Jesus never broke the Sabbath, okay? If he did, he would be a sinner and not a savior. Therefore, they asked the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews, therefore, didn't believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight and asked him, is this your son? whom you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we don't know. Or who opened his eyes, we don't know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if any man would confess him as Christ, Messiah, Mashiach, he would be put out of the synagogue, kicked out of church, more or less. <laughs> Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So they called the man who was blind a second time and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Speaking of Jesus, he therefore answered, I don't know if he's a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't also want to become his disciples, do you? They insulted him and said, you are his disciples, but we are the disciples of Moshe, Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered them, how amazing. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he listens to him. I got to stop here because, you know, what does he mean when he says God doesn't listen to sinners? And where did he get that from? Okay, and a lot of Christians today would say, oh, God listens to sinners. You know, everybody's a sinner. That's not what the scripture says. You know, we got in the book of Psalms that those who are sinners, those who are workers of iniquity, if you, if you hide iniquity in your hearts, it says God will not hear you. God will not hear you. You can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and, pray and God won't hear your prayers. And that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why some prayers are not answered. Because there's sin in your life somewhere. You need to repent of it. Since the world began, it has never been heard of that anyone opened the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he can do nothing. They answered him, You were altogether born in sins. And do you teach us? Then they threw him out. So, so, they, so he got it. So he got what his parents feared. He got kicked out of the synagogue. Okay, He got thrown out. May I submit to you that if you preach the truth, and if you really have that, <laughs> if you really have it, you'll be kicked out of church too. So may God give you boldness and strength as you speak his word, as you preach his word. And may God give you a mind that is able to accept the truth, even if it goes against what you've been taught and what you've believed all your life life. Remember, be humble because you could be wrong.